Hey everybody, welcome to Fishing Planet. My name is Lady and today we're going to fish for pike or pickerel in Missouri. So right now I'm at the pike challenge. I'll show you guys on the map. So I'm uh, right here, pike challenge, and we're fishing for pike here. And then I'll take you guys to uh, Last Songs of Summer right there. And I'll show you the spots uh, where you can catch pike there as well. Okay, so first off, uh, let's just try and, uh, and catch a pike. I'll uh, talk about the gear and uh, uh, stuff later. So this is the spot. Um, if you walk on uh, onto pike challenge, uh, here's where you uh, walk up on. And what you do is you walk all the way to the left, uh, but not the last couple of meters. Uh, for the simple reason is uh, that there's pike here as well. Um, so I like to keep a little bit more distance, that's uh, why I'm standing a few feet uh, away from uh, from the dead uh, lock. Now where you need to cast is right about there. So it's like um, here and then to there. Um, now when you're going to cast, uh, mind the following. So we're casting between uh, a square made by dead trees. So we have one here, another one, the V1 there. We have a dead uh, tree there. And then we have one here as well. And when you're going to cast between these two dead trees, uh, what you need to watch out for if, is if you were to cast right there, is that your line will get tangled up by this one. And then if you were to cast right there, your line gets tangled up by this branch. So that's what you need to watch out for. But other than that, uh, you're completely uh, good to go. So uh, what I'm uh, doing is uh, I'm going to uh, to do a cast and let's see if we uh, can catch uh, something. So as you can see, I have a casting spoon, 9 gram number 1. Um, you can also use it up to 2.0, so no worries about that. And the technique that I'm using is uh, stop and go, which is, uh, in my opinion, the easiest one. Um, so set your reel speed onto 3. And what you do is you hold the left mouse button for a second, you release it and wait for a second. You hold it for a second, release it and wait for a second. And that's pretty much it. So now you just wait until you see that the tension on your bar rises. And then you hit the right mouse button to, uh, to make a strike. Now I hope we uh, we uh, can catch a fish uh, in this first try. We'll make it a lot easier. Yes, and there we go. And here you guys can immediately see uh, that I had some problems there with the tension. And what I'm doing on purpose now, angling my uh, rod to the right, is so that the fish wasn't going to land on uh, the land itself instead of on. Uh, instead of on the water because that's also what uh, what can happen uh, so if the fish uh, jumps out of the water instead of uh, staying back in the water it will land on land and then you have to reel it in over land and uh, for me it takes the fun out of the game it makes it easier to reel it in but still it's not uh, not really fishing so here we go we have ourselves a grass pickerel uh, it's a small one not uh, not a very big well, uh, for a grass pickerel it's uh, it's a, it's a normal one, and we get seven experience points for it, so that's cool. Okay, now um, I don't know if you guys uh, saw it, but it was uh, already jumping right from the start, and then uh, it became a bit docile as it uh, came here, so it didn't fi really give up a fight. But there are pike, in a, uh, especially chain pike, or chain pickerel, that fight a bit harder. And what they start to do is they sort of dance and jump and bounce. And as you could see right here, if you paid attention to it, you saw that there was a, like a bl uh, blue glow around my borders. Uh, it means that uh, your line tension is gone. So what can happen is that the fish can, uh, can fall off and you've lost the fish. But it didn't happen, thankfully. So, okay, let's, uh, let's see. So first off, uh, I'll show you guys uh, the catch that I've... Uh, made for today. So I started at 5 a.m. in the morning. I uh, didn't get very much because it was uh, it is a cloudy day so I fast forward time till 9 a.m. and right away I hooked a chain pickerel. So uh, then I knew I was uh, good to go and now it's uh, it's about 2 p.m. I think. 
So, uh, first off, uh, Grass Pickerel. Um, as I said, it doesn't weigh very much. It's uh, 0.2 kilograms or 0.25 kilograms actually, and then uh, 0 .4, close to 0.4 kilograms. Now, there's actually a trophy uh, Grass Pickerel here that you can catch. Uh, but I wasn't lucky for today, but uh, you can catch it here as well, on this very spot. Now, um, reward and experience wise, uh, not so good. Um, I really like the fight, but rewarding uh, is, uh, is not something that the pike does in terms of money and experience. As you can see right here, we caught like uh, one, two, three, four, five, six uh, grass pickerels and they vary between three and four bucks and experience it's between five and eight points then for the chain pickerel now these are a bit bigger as i said so 0.4 kilograms up to almost close to 800 grams or 0.8 kilograms uh, reward wise a little bit more not that much between five and eight experience they're sort of the double of their uh, their younger brother the grass pickerel um, but still, not not that much. If you catch a bass, like a, a one kilogram bass, it's uh, it's already way more than what you are earning here. And same goes for for catfish and bowfins. So, uh, what can you use to uh, catch these ones? Well, nearly any kind of uh, lures. So here you can see uh, the gold uh, casting spoon, the number one. I use the grub. I use the shad. Both are on a jackhead of one. Um, the silver casting spoon, the yellow with the red dots, and then the silver with the red stripes. So those, uh, these all work. Now uh, jigs work too, like the watermelon and the blue, the blue one and the silver one. Uh, I've got to brought, uh, bring them with me. And same goes for medium spoons. You can use those as well. And you can already start at number two and then use up all the way to two point oh. Uh, I think it's the max. I'm not sure if you can catch them on three point oh. Um, uh, as you can see, we can catch them on a tube or not, so that's uh, that's good to go. Okay, so um, that's pretty much uh, it. First, um, uh, let me show you guys also the setup. So right here, I have a casting rod. It's a just a 190 with a Lodex 1000 S that I'm using. Uh, you can purchase this at a level uh, six or level eight. Uh, I am using a braided 0.50 millimeter line and um, the other rod that I'm having that you can also use is a value spin this one is value spin 230 with a Glister XS 1400 uh, but on level 3 you can already catch these fish at level 3 and um, what you uh, need to bring with you then is a value spin 190 with the mini spin 1200 reel and that will do the job for you as well now I'm using a braided lines um, here but you can also use mono line uh, that will work too. So um, no worries about uh, about the line. Just make sure that uh, your setup is uh, good. So uh, your rod has to be the strongest, 3.5. Then your reel, which is 2.4, and then your line, which is here, is 1.8. So your line always has to be the lowest, because if you get a snag or uh, you find a very big uh, big fish, uh, it's the line that breaks instead of your reel and your rod. So enough about that, uh, let's show you guys the spots on uh, Lessons. Now you don't need to go to the map, you can actually just walk there, which is awesome. I really uh, like this, and I think they should uh, add this to New York as well. On New York you still get um, uh, pushed back to the map, when you walk uh, walk from the pier or from the dock to, uh, to where you need to be. Um, here they uh, they don't they let you walk uh, walk around at least on this part you can't walk uh, to catfish heaven but anyways so here is where the other spot is oh wait a second someone is uh Um, now I'm going to uh, the end him right away. Oh. Go to settings. Then to the 
last tap and hit the box in front of the pro marker. Okay, so uh, done with that. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, next time I'll uh, tape in a <coughs> in a room where uh, there are no viewers. But um, a couple of guys wanted to uh, to see me uh, doing a video. So um, here we go. So notice that on the other side we had the dead trees, and that is exactly the trees that you can see right here on last songs. So, um, but if I were to stand all the way on this side. Of course we can't uh, throw it in there. So that's why you have to stand all the way on the left side and then we cross cast, that's uh, how it's called, we cross cast there. <coughs> Do note though that we have this dead branch sticking out again. So what uh, you need to do is you need to make sure that when you cast it's a bit more here than, um, so that your line doesn't uh, get tangled up. Anyway, so uh, let's give this uh, spot a try as well. Now I've switched um, rods because my casting rod can't cast as far as uh, my spinning rod. Uh, so that's the reason why I've uh, done that. Um, but here it's again simple stop and go. Now, um, right now I'm using a spoon again, uh, this time a 2.0. If you are to uh, use uh, a different kind of lure like uh, a jig, or uh, a jig head with uh, a grab on it or a shed. Uh, what you also can do is um, instead of stop and go or instead of a lift and drop is use the twitch. Uh, that technique works as well. If you want to know how to, uh, to do a twitch uh, I have a video about it on my uh, on my channel that you can, uh, can watch uh, as well. So um, okay but um, this is uh, the place that you need to uh, to be for pike. Now it's uh, a bit less frequent that you can uh, can catch them here. Also, we're now close to 36 meters. And um, when we're down to 25 meters, which is right a bit behind uh, the tree, uh, what then happens is that we enter like bass territory. Uh, so instead of uh, pike, you uh, you can catch bass there. Um, Still, it's uh, it's nice. So if you can't uh, catch a pike, uh, you can also catch a bass and earn some more money than uh, than the pike can give you. So right now I'm uh, going to reel this one in, and uh, we don't have a fish uh, chasing it. Okay, and then the third spot. Now for this you definitely need a spinning rod. And the reason for that is simple is you need to be able to cast really far. Now, and I know that on this rod, uh, I can't cast much further than about 58 meters, I think. Now, if you can cast like 63 meters, that's even better. Uh, because between there and 40 meters, which is about here, is where you catch uh, the chain pike. I've only managed to catch a uh, chain pickerel here and not grass pickerel but it is a spot so um, just a uh, few guys so uh, so you know it um, so now I'm on 57 meters which isn't very mm, I would have loved to have uh, five more meters extra but I haven't the brought the right um, setup uh, with me in the right rod with the with the reel um, but just to try it out, uh, what you can do is, uh, um, for instance, if you're using a number one spoon, uh, it weighs less than this casting spoon. This one is 14 gram, where a number one is 7 gram. And now the heavier the lure, the in general, the further you can cast. Also with medium spoons, they uh, cast uh, further as well. Um, it has a bit to do with uh, aerodynamics. It's uh, the glide smoother. Sort of, sort of say they're more like a spare that you can uh, throw. Um, so they haven't uh, don't have that much. How do you say friction? Okay, and I have a snack there. Uh, it's soft already. Now I'm going to reel this into uh, thirty, and 
yeah, nothing else. So now I'm starting to reel uh, in the line uh, for the simple reason that right now I won't be able to catch any pike anymore from uh, 30 meters. Uh, the only thing that I will catch is uh, bass. So, um, but those are the three spots that you can catch uh, pike or pickerel here in uh, in Missouri. It's uh, the place over there. So uh, there, and the further you can cast into the reeds there, the better it is. Now, then the other spot was on this side of the dead trees. And then, of course, uh, Pike Challenge. It's named uh, with a reason, so uh, go over there if you want to catch a lot of pike. Um, which is uh, behind the corner of, uh, of there. So, um... I think uh, that's uh, pretty much it. I've shown you guys. So I've shown you guys the setup. Uh, told you about the spots, uh, times. So on um, on a cloudy day like today, uh, as I said, I didn't catch anything at 5 a.m. a.m. in the morning, but I did uh, catch uh, fish at 9. On sunny days, they tend to be a bit more active in the early morning. So uh, I suggest that you start at 5 a.m. and just see uh, see where it goes. And if you can't catch a fish, uh, fast forward to say 7 a.m. or 8 and you're good to go. And you can fish them then for say nearly the entire day long. Now on uh, cloudy days uh, the pike like to swim everywhere and on Sunday days they prefer to keep a bit more uh, underneath stuff, so in the shelter. Um, pike are predatory fish and they like to uh, sit on the bottom and uh, be like among dead uh, trees and uh, lines of reeds and weeds and uh, lily pads. Um, well, if, if they're close to the shore. So, uh, that's, uh, that's it. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this video. Uh, for now, I wish you guys happy days, tight lines, and I'll see you later. Bye bye!